as Māori rather than relying on the government to to for your rangatiratanga. You need to have a rangatiratanga mindset. As a uh, researcher, right, you think, man, this, we're lucky. Oh, at the end of the two days, oh, it's actually fai mana, fai rawa, fai oranga, mm-hmm. wina. If that's not right, we're never going to be right. All the diaries, all the accounts say our people dominated commercial fishing. Steeped in your reo, steeped in your, um, you know, Māori culture, you can do anything in this world. Kia ora, kia ora kōrua. Heri ei, a hau no te tau rāwhiti, e i te fua hau oro tō o te whanga rā kairoa me te aitanga mate i tahi o ngā hapu o ngā tiparau. Um, I tēnei wā he kairanga hau a hau, a mō te hapu o te aitanga mate me te whanga rā, kairo, rā kairoa. Um, e pāna ki a uh, O tātou rohe moana. Um, so yeah, I've I've got a background in environmental planning, um, but a way and means for me to remain at home and like in Ruatoria and um, and work in Kaupapa that I felt a lot about, uh, especially Kaupapa Tayo has been through research. Um, and so I'm one of the researchers on the Huatakina project, which is part of the Tangaroa program in this last phase of the Sustainable Seas Challenge. And yeah, that project works with partners with two, what we call Kaitiaki Trusts. Um, so, and, and there's a Whakapapa back to the foreshore and seabed, uh, when the foreshore and seabed legislation came out in 2003, um, Ngāti Pro moved to negotiate their own arrangements, I suppose, um, and that was uh, Ngāhapu o Ngāti Pro. so as hapu, as whānau and hapu we've maintained our, our Mahinga kai and kaitiaki practices with our moana um, versus the iwi doing that. And that's translated all the way through so that the the rights and interests to govern and manage sit at our hapu level. So we, huh, the whole thing about it, but um, we've collectivised this hapu in relation to our coastlines, uh, so you can think of them as um, takiwa, um, so the hapu within that takiwa, and your doorway to the sea. That's generally how we've rearranged, or not rearranged ourselves, just um, in more formal governance mm-hmm. settings like treaty settlements in this act, which is now the Ngārohe Moana, O Ngā Hapu O Ngā Te Parau Act. So it's formalised legally through those hapu collectives. Has that been a, you know, somewhat of a seamless transition? Has it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it has been um, really interesting because naturally, whakapapa-wise, how we relate, you know, how you associate with your marae and how you go to the beach, get you a kai, that's all normal. No, that's how we do it. But as soon as this policy and legislation overlay sort of kicked in, we all just, yeah, we were, you know, we didn't agree with it, we fought against it, we didn't want to sign it. Um, we went through, we've been through that. And, and some of our whānau and hapu still uh, have chosen not to, um, be a part of Ngā Hapu Ngā Te Parau in terms of the Rohe Moana. Um, but yeah, and so you, you actually need your own little manual to translate what is written in terms of the act and, and 
the, the deed of agreement. So I've actually been trying to get Auntie Agnes to come and do a podcast because she knows all this stuff off the back of her eyelids. Um, to, and she, she'll have a way better um, way of articulating mm-hmm. it because there's quite a lot of steps. But essentially, in, in, from what I reckon, is our response to the Foreshaw and Seabed Act was to negotiate this um this arrangement it went it, so we would have started in 2004 a deed of agreement was signed in 2008 uh the basis of, of that deed of agreement is what we refer to as the toy two principles toy two te mana tua toy two te mana whenua me te mana moana toy two te mana tangata toy two te tiriti and and in that deed in fact, the deed is much easier to read than the Act. Um, in that deed, there's also a range of what we call mechanisms or instruments, which have gone on to become legal mechanisms, which add to our sense of mana in relation to our korohe moana or moana or tahuna. Tatahi, what you know, mm. however you refer to your to your beach or to your sea. Um so that was two thousand and eight the deed was signed. Somewhere in there the Foreshawn Sea Bed Act got dropped. A new one come in, marine and coastal areas. And so our uh, negotiations were held up with the other things government were doing, and particularly in that space. Um, and then finally our act was ratified in 2019. It's pretty much when it came in, you know, soon after COVID hit, so we, were, we weren't able to, we lost a lot of momentum between the signing of the deed when everything was really humming and that's like 11 years later, the act is ratified. So, yeah, losing momentum and all of that um, has cost a lot mm. in terms of uh, re- regenerating in our whānau and hapu and marae the, the slightly different... Um, roles and responsibilities we now have that, that have added legal um, powers and strength. It strengthens. It's not definitely not saying we only have these because of that act. That act enables mm. what we've, what we sought to negotiate for as a way of protecting our mana moana, basically. So, yeah. Uh, it's better when you see it in p- pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. harder. I hear I hear a lot of corridor going around about in legislation and policy about you know enacting and and really in, embodying rangatiratanga and manamotu hake. I'd assume that a lot of this research and what you know is underpinned by those treaty it's, principles and you know tikanga and yeah, yeah. Well, it, actually, we weren't that great. Um, particularly, probably my generation <laughs> down, we're not that great. Um. It doesn't come as natural to mm-hmm. us in terms of treaty, treaty principles, or, um, and that's not to fuck a itzi them, but, and I don't know, it might be a ahika thing, but we actually, you know, all the other the toitu te mana atua all the way through to mana tangata, those things we have more of a natural response to in terms of we have an understanding of them, we have a practice of them. Toitu te tiriti, only certain ones, you know, have that um, constant interface with the Crown, mm. with government. They're not usually our home-based ones. Um, Interesting. Who prefer to be home bods, you know. So so the link with the research was, I think, about the time the this last phase of the challenge was seeking new proposals or, you know, re- renewing bids. Um we decided uh, a few of us from home collectivised to do a bid, and we felt we felt um, 
if if the challenge agreed to our whakaaro, which was to how are we going to effectively implement the act um, as as hapu as hapu collectives, and then alongside that we wanted to also be in the sea, so we wanted to be doing either a monitoring something or a restoration initiative that kept us in the moana, like, as, as part of the formal research. Um, so, yeah, we were fortunate in being accepted as one of the Tangaro projects in the Tangaro program. Um, and, and as research, well, not just as research activities, but also as... Um, Kaupapa, the chalk and cheese, you know, and um, what was awesome was everyone wanted to be part of the, what was essentially a dive program, monitoring, um, you know, upskilling through free diving um, and trying to match uh, or incorporate um, kōrero tukuiho with um, restoration approaches and monitoring to work out the state of the sea of our moana, um, even to even to articulate the state of our moana mm. has been you know it's not straightforward um, unless you're the, you're a diver or a fisher and you're out there all the time. Um, yeah, so even just people articulating their what they've observed is changing. Um, and then me coming along with my research portai on and trying to capture that in their voice that makes that makes it real and makes it um you know encourages us as fun and happy to do something about those things mm. so and so it might be um you know um well it it got us to a point of can we describe these in terms of Modi statements? And so, you know, in Wānanga they'll go, you know, our sea is, you know, we we haven't been able to offer a certain clay that 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 we always used to get on our um, hakari tables for so many years, you know, and we'd freely talk about this in Wānanga. Okay, okay, so if I made that a Modi statement in our customary fisheries plan. I would say we are in the state of Modi Heke. Oh no, 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 you can't say that. You get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um we got to a, a place of being comfortable about talking about how how unwell we all agreed um our mourner was, but to put it in black and white on paper in um in our customary fisheries plan, no, that mm. there was that was probably the one major violent reaction we had um, is that, in that process. What do you think that is? Is that because that becomes, like, documented? Yeah, I think it becomes a real? record and mm -hmm. um, it's a record. Yeah, it's recorded. I don't know. And, um, and do you think that it's because traditionally we didn't do those things, so it feels quite foreign to perhaps go, well, wānanga about these things, but when you start to, you know, write or video... That's when there's sort of like this connection between, um, maybe to to do. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ele elements of all of that. Certainly, the publishing aspect of it. Not saying we were publishing it as an academic paper or anything like that. That was for the customary fisheries plans, which our our target audience like. And our role as hapa researchers, helping our hapa collectives or supporting them to work through that planning process, those plans were for, ah, you know, they were for the whānau and, and hapū. Um, they were for Fisheries New Zealand later mm. or after. Um, but, you know, we, uh, um, it was, it's quite a hard case actually to think about. But, you know, and, and so that's okay. So we, we took it out. We, okay, that's, you guys aren't comfortable with that. Um, and so how are we dealing with um, the state of our mourner that we're not happy with. And, you know, our people are very passionate about, um, about the mourner that we, we subsist. A lot of our whānau need that, that, that's our supermarket. 
Back in saves about 130k south, you know. We have supermarkets, but you get what I mean? Like our supermarket is our, our ngahere, our whenua, and our sea, and our gardens. Um, and, yeah, so there's a lot of passionate um, <laughs> contributions to the wānanga processes that we used. Um, but also mixed views on what is actually effective. Mm. You know, so it's like, okay, we can say this, but in what is that going to keep commercial fishers out there? Yeah. Uh, we we have kinna barons because there's not enough. The fish that eat the kinna, I think it's the snapper, mm. you know, they're being commercially fished. Um, so there's imbalance, so, you know. Um, and, and so actually being collective, like having a whole suite of collective processes to work through challenges and potential solutions and to, you know, uh, the struggle was at, I think Uncle Graham Smith coined the phrase, multiple sites of resistance. So you've got to have resistance with our um, mahinga kai people. You've got to have resistance with those who will go in, represent us at local government, at central government. Um, you know, these you you got to have the ones who can call it all on the marae, in the marae, in hui, in homes. It's a huge undertaking. Um, so even just change, getting our people to understand our expectations, there's no silver bullet. There's no one person can be all of that. But we need a way to hear each other and then agree what what approach are we going to take or what are the approaches we're going to take and then divvy up the workload and say, right, you represent us there and you you are saying this, this and this because this is what we've agreed are our mm. positions. You, you're, you know, you do what you do, you feed the whanau, you feed the marae. While you're out there, can you look for this, this and that? Or, you know, Pia, you go and find opportunities to maybe secure other research that will progress other wawata that we have. So these, um, that's sort of all the things we need to be doing. Mm. Um, yeah, Massive. trying to try and get the outcomes that, that we want. I guess my, the, the part that comes to mind for me is what were those outcomes that you were sort of looking for? You know, in, in terms of the research project and in, in terms of who are Tokyo and you know, what what you know, from the outset to wrapping up. Yeah, so I I had less to do with the, the dive work stream. But um I suppose from there it was to uh try and profile the state of the mona of our respective um areas. So one the first Kaitaki Trust is in Waipuro, so Ngahapu Waipuro. So that's one bay, and the bay right next door uh, to the north is Whareponga. So we were working with two Kaitaki Trusts. Um, so the in Moana work stream was around trying to profile the state of it, each Rohe Moana um, to grow capability and pathways to, you know, track our those who are interested into marine biology, marine sciences, um, skipper tickets, diving tickets, because mm -hmm. um, there's a huge interest in that, um, but we're not, you know, we're not necessarily ticketed up. And then on the on the side that looked at the effective implementation of the act by Hapu, um, it was well, really, I think we thought we could achieve more <laughs> than we did. Um, so, but it, it actually was really difficult. So we had to, we had to think about, right, how do we prepare, say, visual or resources, they ended up being visual, to break down the mechanisms of the act to help with understanding. Mm. And, and like, how do we actually talk about it? Because, mm. um, you know, here, I want know. Te reo o te pere mm. o te ture. Um, 
Mick to PD. Yeah, me and Mick to PD. To how we would usually, um, yeah, we, we weren't as au okay fait in talking about um, legislation, especially legislation that actually was based on our on our tikanga. Mm. Um, I guess, I guess, in looking at you know the body of work that you have done so far. However, the fact that you might think that we thought we could have done more, I guess this is the foundations of you know doing more moving forward or for others to take up some money and go, oh, these were the hardships. This was something that, you know, Pierre and the team and, you know, who are talking that found difficult, but there's at least documentation there. You know, there's, there's, there's places, there's systems that work that, okay, we can work from maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, a, a, an opportunity that we did get was to say, actually the types of governance and experience of governance that we have doesn't fit you know if you've been in um marae on marae committees and trustees if you've been a um a runanga trustee if you've been a more modern you know post settlement psge trustees or even corporate governance um the skills and experiences you have there need to be adapted for hapu collective governance of of a natural resource like the moana you know you don't have a fence you um what what i do here or what we do in this bay can affect the other bays or what so and so is doing up up on the maunga comes down the river and out into there you know so it's uh um it requires a rethink and um we have the tikanga to bridge all of that, but um, we can't assume that because we're experiencing governance on farm committees and, and corporations or, or, you know, all these other entities that we have in Māori dim, that just like that, that we can cookie cut that into this kind of hapu governance. Um, it, it, yeah, so there's, 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 there's a whole wānanga, uh, you know, like think of doing a PhD every day mm. to to um, to have the wherewithal of the full extent of um, mana that we can express or that can be strengthened in this process. Um, that that was probably a key. That was an early obs observation, let's put it that way, but trying to articulate that to the current, the trustees of the day is very hard and trying to articulate that to ones looking to come on. Um, you know, you could assume, oh, that person's not, do you know, not putting in the time or not understanding things or, but actually it is quite complex. Mm. Um yeah, and as I said, even having the language to articulate things, you have to we have to develop that. Um, we certainly our, through our tikanga we have we we can leverage off that. Um, it it does take some compromise, I suppose, around how decisions were made, and you can honour that, but there might be a few extra steps because of the 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 new responsibilities that we've we've signed up to mm. um what were some other learnings we had on so we we so we got quite good at um so working through resources to wānanga or workshop um the the instruments so the instruments is like a fisheries mechanism um there's conservation protocols there's an environmental covenant which is like we all Hapu management plans in the resource management sense. There's protection of wahitapu. Um, is a minerals instrument. So there's all these kinds of instruments that um, pretty much cover the bulk of activities that could happen in in Yorohe mm. and um, and that we have certain roles and responsibility. You know, we have ahika mana moana roles but we have with the act we also have these legal responsibilities to to protect and 
facilitate and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so it's it's full on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hard out. Um, was 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 sort of the rohe and with the you know the ahika and and you know na na naudi or nati pro and and ngā hapu were they were they happy were they on board were they were they wanting to be a part of you know this this research and and I guess upskilling and bringing mahi and you know capability into the iwi. I suppose <laughs> the way to answer that is not outwardly so, and that's not to say they were against it. Um, I suppose they were just, it's a toha. It, you get him and Noah having to, you know, you just want to be, say, kaitiaki, mm. but you got to go and put on a suit and go and be kaitiaki in places where really you could just go and get, you know, oh, the tide's right. We're going to go and get a kai. Mm. You know, there's, there's that sense of kaitiaki, tanga, through the preservation of your practice. But this actually requires some of us now to be kaitiaki in, in all these other ways, with it, you know, talk to fish and zed, mm. talk about fisheries regulations. And the ones who will talk to them aren't necessarily our fisher people, you know, who wanted to spare. So it's... um. It was hoa in that way. Um, I think where, where the hapu and the Kaitiaki trust, Trustees galvanised, as to say the others didn't, it's, it, it is quite a complex and complicated um, thing. And it's, it's actually, uh, you know, it's um, the expectations on both sides, especially from the home ones that you're, you're sorted when actually you're not because you all need to be collective and on the same page is quite, it's, um, it's stressful. You know, it's taumaha mm. or heahua taumaha. Um, as well as, um, agencies, you know, to actually do anything, they actually have to now contact us in our Kaitiaki trust, trustee, is it, is Kaitiaki trust? Um, and you know their agencies, they get resources. They well, they get rates, and they just think you can ring someone up an actual day job. Yeah, it's yeah, not. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. This is our life. And yeah, it's if you've done everything else. Oh, that's right. I've got to go and do that yeah. or, for the pa or for the hapu or for whatever. So it's as per it's um, inequitable. Um, the, there's a really strong need for clear, simple messaging of. You know, it's, um, I can't think of an example right now, but to both our people in in the agencies and developers and whoever we have to deal with is actually, you know, first principles are if you want to do anything in our place, you come and see us. Mm. If you've got a government contract, or, you know, if you've got a government grant to come and do, say, a, a research activity or or to, pres to take the whale bones that got buried last year, you come and see the Kaitiaki Trust of that place. And that's not to say you're not the hapu, because ideally the hapu have placed, the hapu have placed the trustees into the trust. Mm -hmm. So it's not to separate us, but it's like a formal post box, basically. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Point of contact. And then, yeah, so... So the agencies are uh, needing to get uh, on board. On board too, mm. yeah. And I guess in terms of um, you know the research project and just the rohe and you know everyone there, what are the what are the whanga, what are the wabata, what are, what are you hoping to achieve and you know have outcomes for you know towards the end, perhaps looking past the end of the project. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Probably two to three main uh, results or learnings um, and, and outputs, me key in research land, um, has been around hapu led policy development and encouraging our people to rely on their own, well, to reo me on the tikanga, their own sense of understanding to guide 
step policy development. So, yeah, policy making is the most uncool thing to have to try, you know, pull a wānanga or a party on. Um, um, but so in our, in our research, we've used uh, a framework that was actually developed back in 2012, which we call and was always referred to as Te Pao Tangaroa. Um, and we've used that to assist these two hapu collectives to develop their customary fisheries plan. So Fish and Z had provided a template of a customary fisheries plan, um, which was cool, and it was probably, I don't know, five pages or something. But when you actually read it, and if you imagine yourself journeying through it, it's not naturally how we think about our moana, and then that it, you sort of end up managing a, a, an asset, not um, not allowing your relationship with your moana to define what should be done and how you should go about it. So, you, so it's you you're looking at fill this in, tick the boxes, manage for compliance, as opposed to what does our relationship with our mona tell us that we should be putting in a, in a, you know, how would we define what should be in a customary fisheries plan? Mm. Do we want our maramataka in there? Do we want our tikanga at the beach in there? You know, that's not in the template. Yeah. Um, do we want to, I think both wanted to identify their, their species, you know, and the, the, Taonga species or whakapapa species. Um, but we would do it in the whakapapa sense on, on our way of doing it. And in this one, it might be, you know, it might be a list with the scientific name and the, yeah, so, um, so. Different, different, yeah, just different, different Yeah. Mm. Um, what would be the, the other main difference we saw, well, I saw is the, 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 the agency template um, quickly got you to um, look at fisheries management objectives. <sighs> Whereas our one, you know, you've got to hit, hit all and all. Mm. You want to talk about um, te mauri o te moana and then sustainability. And then fisheries management is actually a, a subset of that. Mm. And, and, and you recognise recreational interests and commercial interests as well or what are the hapu what are the hapu positions or connections to recreational fishing and um what are our interests and now what what for us would be Ngāti Pro seafoods in terms of our commercial interests so yeah so different ways of doing it um one could be partly a desktop analysis of fishing as, as one knows it and the other or well, we use our uh, wānanga mm. to in in partnership with the uh, hapu and marae of of those areas to um to progress the draft well, um and is this all under the first output of policy is that well we we because you know because you, you can't get people hapu whānau to turn up to talk about policy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but they were slightly motivated to come and talk about customary fisheries planning. So we used that as the, we looked at that as the policy exercise, helped them to produce an, um, a, a plan that, that they were looking to do anyway. And we've just, in terms of the research part, we've just looked at learnings in terms of the approaches, um, what were the challenges, yeah, what were some tools that helped. Um, yeah, that was the research part of it, and the rest was was the hapu in it, you know. So in terms of research results, we're not um, oh, what we what we've been allowed to share of the customary fisheries plans, we've incorporated that, but otherwise the output isn't the customary fisheries plan. It's how did um this framework of Te Pao Tangaroa facilitate and assist our hapu mm. to to in this case develop customary fisheries plans um that says the policy 
the other um the other main um result was we were wanting to look at um a decision making tool so we've got a, a sort of an infographic there based on the toy two principles so it would be um so the toy two principles are central to everything and and so oh actually I'll step back the the act and the deed have a definition of each principle but if you were to read like if when I read it I was like oh no that's not what I think um particularly toy to te mana whenua me te mana mona meant like in terms of what I know mm. about it it's like oh yeah that I'd need to break that down further or try and re you know re rewrite it basically so we actually did wānanga which eat with each hapu collective to get their whakaaro about well, what do those mean to you. Don't don't look at the legislation's um, definition. And then we said, okay, so they sort of gave us that all. And then we said, okay, um, what are some practices you associate with what you've described for mana tua or mana, mana whenua, mana mona. And, you know, there were things like um, karakia and ceremony, our right to be the ahika that we are here, here taonga tukuiho, um, no ngā atua, mana whenua, mana mōnis, ahika, um, manaki, kaitiaki, you know, you can go through mm. and then they, you, they, you can either tease it out or they'll say, oh, that's this practice or when we do this, that relates to, to that, um, same thing, mana tangata. And then, um, so from that, oh, we've had to have a few goes at it because it's a policy piece, development piece, but um, the research team have looked at other iwi and hapu and how they've gone about um, their cultural values informing their policy and, and implementation. So... If if I can coin it in um, Nikki Douglas's um, uh, way of talking about policy development, if you know your principles or values, and you um, you can identify and talk about your practice that relates to those values, then the part in the middle is is your policy. So usually we have to go principles practice. And then, yeah, fine tune what what policies are, and so, yeah, effectively, that's what we we didn't know that when we did the one. <laughs> I found out later about PPP, she calls it, but um, yeah, effectively, that's the best and simplest way to talk to your uncles and mm. sons and cousins about policy development from a cultural values. Uh, framework, yeah. Main. Those are the main, yeah, the main two. And then that te pao tangaroa framework, which is really looking at, you know, the structure of a pa and whare. And I suppose if you think about the pōhiri process, you're called on, you respond. Um, on the marae atea, there's that chance to um fuck a fifty quarter or tohe tohe. Mm. There's where you're placed on the pai pai or on the maho, you have a role, you're protecting certain things. Um yeah, and just we've just taken a bit of creative license around the the front of the um meeting house. So I think the Maihi and the Amo um the Maihi for us with the customary fisher fishing considerations and the um the amo were say recreational fishing interests and commercial interests so but i create a license there then you go into the whare um the tahuhu is we've got is the modi and then the heke are are our taonga or all, all the different Kai, seaweed, every, everything, uh, uh, you know, te tini o tangaroa. Um, the Pautoko Manawa, I think we've got them as management objectives. So, yeah, we've we've sought to um, use the 
components of the fare to try and reflect things we might think about anyway and then apply it to fisheries planning or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Um, so we um, we just, that's our last bit we're working on now is um, graphically representing that. Um, yeah. Mean. Hopefully in a 3D way, but what was it? <laughs> even a virtual reality. Well, even put a, the goggles on. Oh, yeah. A stick figure would do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I think you have grand ideas and then you're like, okay, why are we? <laughs> okay, A4 Pepper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got, no, Disney's helping us out with it. Oh, mean. Ah, oh, it sounds like a, a, a as you said, a, a complex body of work, <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of different elements that go into, you know, one body of research, but it sounds like you'd put in a lot of hard work and effort. So, you know, acknowledgements to you and the team for, you know. Sticking at it and <laughs> getting to the end, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's probably one of the things about being a researcher in your home, home and home community and hapu and Fano that's soon straighten you out. Um, and you, yeah, there's sort of you know you're accountable till you die basically. So if, like for me as a researcher, I don't like things going out if I don't feel I can uh, defend it and I, I I hate public things anyway so for something you've written which is going to stay in word a long long time um, I have to be I have to feel that I'm happy okay you yeah, know that can go out like that um, people have their perspectives when they read it or whatever um, but yeah let's have a quarter it all in and get to understand the 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 foundations and assumptions we've used to to message um, the things that we will end up putting into written written reports or written outputs for the challenge. Yeah, not an easy job, and especially when you're working with Fano uncles, aunties, and you know everyone's got their own experience of you know what they think is correct or right or wrong. You know, it's not an easy job, so you know just. Mm-hmm. And um and to the team. But yeah, I think I think Um but you know, if there's any other quarter rule that you think you know you might want to add to that cup pie. No, it's just well, no, it's really just being able to get together because there's a challenge and there's a as a collective of Ma Kopapa Maori Rangahau. Um it's been challenging to come together. Um so it is always good to meet and yeah, we were just having a crack up with one of the other project teams and just all of our little picky menga heke. <laughs> um, it's good to laugh too. And but you know, in private sort of. Um yeah, and just to just to find a a, a balance again about okay, like how can we do that? Um how can we resolve that and get on with it? Kotitsuki, whaenga, whaenga katoa, because um, my other thing is, you know, res- uh, research, research isn't hard, but w- w- the funding comes from the system, so, um, and they're always assuming that we can't research, mm. or that we're not of this, or not of that, or we can't, um, we don't write it how they want to re- read it, I'm talking about the system reading it. Um, when we know our first audience is that is our people, um, but so for me, the, there's there's multiple, but certainly dual standards we have to uphold. So as researchers, you know, if we say a research is getting done, or hapu research is getting done, and these hapu's names, hapu names, then we're gonna get it done. Ahakonga piki menga heke because it's not, it's not me as the researcher it's the research in that hapu's name um and I'll, i would be um probably more over the top if i was working with another hapu or, or iwi that i didn't fuck up up to um you know you you have to meet with those standards as well as our people's mm. um and yeah our people's ones are higher but you you got to cover both it, it's your that's, I think, for Māori researchers, 
we have to do that to make uh, the way easier for the ones who are who are going to carry on. Um, yeah, because when you come behind a researcher that hasn't done a good job, you have a lot to clean up before you can actually get on with with the mahi. So, yeah, that's probably my last plug. I mean, and I just I just want to touch on that as well as. You know, I've heard from a lot of the researchers that we've spoken to this week is that it's awesome to be around other kai, kairangaho Māori because you go through the same struggles. <laughs> you know, you might find commonality between research projects and they might be up north and you might be, you know, down here, everywhere. But it's like we're all walk, working towards one sort of common common goal and that's the restoration of the moana and, you know, it, yeah. it, it becoming alive and well and sort of protecting that mana and its modi. So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. awesome. And our mana and Modi mm. intrinsically linked with our tayo, with our moana. So if that's not right, we're never going to be right. Um, yeah, all of those things. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I mean, me ana kia koe pia. Um, tēnā koe i nei kōrero i, I tō tōtō i, I o mātou ranga, ko, ko a ranga haua. Um, it, was, it was amazing to hear and all the best for the, to the, to the latter end of the project and Hopefully it all, you know, all the dreams and aspirations come to fruition. Kapai. Thank you. Tendakwe.